Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about congruent triangles. Now, we've already talked about how congruent just means same size, two figures or two things that are the same size. And when we talk about congruent triangles, we say that two triangles are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent. Now, when we're trying to identify two triangles as being congruent, we are basically looking for congruent markings. So to identify congruent segments, or if you prefer the congruent sides of a triangle, we look for the same hash marks. And we've talked some already about hash marks. When we're looking to identify congruent angles, we look for the same curved markings. Or sometimes we say curved hash marks. So let's take a look at some examples of two triangles that we want to identify as being congruent. So example number one. We have these two triangles here. And let me go ahead and label this triangle number one and triangle number two. Sometimes it's, it's useful to be able to identify the two, distinguish the two triangles. And the first thing I want to do is I want to identify all the congruent angles on these two triangles. Well, I've got my curved hash marks here in all the angles. So let me just write down what angles, pairs of angles I have congruent. So I see angle A and angle D. So I say angle A is congruent to angle D. There's one pair of congruent angles. Angle B on this triangle and angle E on this triangle are congruent. So angle B congruent to angle E. And then I have angle C on this triangle and angle F. So angle C, C is congruent to angle F. All right, so there are all my pairs of congruent angles. Now I want to look for my pairs of congruent sides. So let's see, I've got side AB with a single hash mark and side DE with a single hash mark. So those two sides are congruent. So let's see, AE, that's segment, oops, segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And let's see, segment BC has a double hash mark. Segment EF has a double hash mark. So those two segments are congruent. BC is congruent to segment EF. And let's see, let's say AC and DF are congruent. So segment AC is congruent to segment DF. So now I've written down all of my pairs of congruent sides, and I can see that since I have all three angles of triangle number one congruent to all three angles of triangle number two, and all three sides of triangle number one congruent to all three sides of triangle number two, then I know that these two triangles must be congruent. So I can write down now that these two triangles, triangle number one, is going to be congruent to triangle number two. Now I want to write down the angles of the triangle. In other words, I want to name the triangle in a very particular way. I want my congruent angles on triangle number one to match up with my congruent angles on triangle number two when I write down their vertices. So let's say triangle A, B, C. That's going to be congruent to triangle, and I'll need to write this in the order D, E, F. And the reason I need to write this triangle, the, the vertices for this triangle in that order, is because I want my congruent angles to match up. So angle A is congruent to angle D. A is my first angle here. D is my first angle here. Angle B is congruent to angle E. So that's my second letter that I write down. Angle C is congruent to angle F. So that's my third angle that I write down. Notice also segment AB is congruent to segment DE. Well, these two segments, or rather this segment, AB and DE, notice they're in the same relative position when I write down my congruence statement. So segment AB congruent to segment DE, they're in the same position. Segment BC and EF, BC, EF, 
those letters are in the same position. A, C, and D, F. Here's A, C, first and last. Here's D, F, first and last. So we're going to see that over and over again every time we write down the congruence statement for two triangles. Right, so let's take a look at example number two. Okay, here once again I have two triangles. We call this triangle number one, triangle number two. And I've got some congruence markings. So let me write down all of my pairs of congruent angles. So angle P and angle W are congruent. Angle Q and angle V are congruent. And angle R and angle U, since those are both right angles, angle R congruent to angle U. And notice I'm going in order. This is always triangle 1 congruent to triangle 2. Triangle 1 congruent to triangle 2. All right, an angle on triangle 1 and then an angle on triangle 2. All right, my congruent sides, let's see. Here's my single hash marks. So side PQ, segment PQ is congruent to segment WV. Notice also when I write down my segments, when I write down the congruence statement for my segments, I'm going in corresponding order here as well. PQ and WV, angle P and angle W, those are my congruent angles here. Angle Q and V, those are my congruent angles, so they are in the same relative position when I write that congruent statement. Let's see. My double hash marks, that's going to be PR and WU. So side PR or segment PR congruent to segment WU. And my third hash mark, my three hash marks, let's see, let's say QR and VU. QR, segment QR, congruent to segment VU. Okay, so now, once again, I have all three angles of, of triangle number one, congruent to all three angles of triangle number two, all three sides of triangle number one, congruent to all three sides of triangle number two. Now I can say that these two triangles are congruent. So all I need to do now is write my congruent statement with my triangle vertices in the correct order. So let's start with triangle number one. Let's say PQR. PQR is congruent to, and I need to get these in the right order, WVU. WVU. And now I can double check angle P and angle W. They're in the same position here in my congruent statement. P and W are congruent. Q and V are in the middle. Q and V are congruent. R and U are at the end, and R and U are congruent. Now, for these first two examples, that was fairly straightforward to write down our congruence statement and get the, the angles or the vertices in the proper order because the two triangles were in the same, they kind of had the same orientation. In other words, their angles were already matched up. Angle P and angle Q are congruent. Well, they're in the left-hand side of the triangle. Angle Q and V, they're both at the top of the triangle. Angle R and U, they're both on the right-hand bottom part of the triangle. So that was fairly easy to match up the congruent angles on those examples. Let's take a look at one. Let's take a look at an example where it's not quite as easy because our triangles are not matched up quite that way. So here's example number three. This is triangle number one and triangle number two. Once again, I want to write down all my congruent angles. So angle J, so my first set of curved hash marks, is congruent to angle P. So angle J congruent to angle P. Let's see, angle K and N are congruent. And my three curvy marks, angle L and angle M. So angle L is congruent to angle M. All right, so there's my three pairs of congruent angles. Now I want to do my sides. Single hash mark is JK and single hash mark PN. So I want segment JK is congruent to segment PN. And let's see, segment KL has a double hash mark and segment NM. So KL is congruent to NM. 
And finally, my last side with the three hash marks, I've got, let's say, JL. Segment JL is congruent to segment PM. And notice, once again, I wrote those in the order that their congruent angles are. Since J, angle J and angle P are congruent, I've got J and P first, and then L and M second when I write down the congruent statement for that segment. OK, so now once again, I have all three angles of triangle number one congruent to all three angles of triangle number two, all three sides of triangle number one congruent to all three sides of triangle number two. So these two triangles are congruent. So I can write my congruent statement. Triangle number one is congruent to triangle number two. Now I just need to get my triangle vertices in the right order. So let's start with JKL. So triangle JKL is congruent to, let's see, J and P. So I need triangle P. K is congruent to angle N. So I want angle N in the middle. And then angle L is congruent to angle M, so I want M as my last one over here. And here's my congruent statement. Triangle JKL is congruent to triangle PNM. Now, notice I could have also written this as triangle LKJ is congruent to triangle, let's see, MNP. And notice this would be a correct congruent statement to write also because I've got angle L and angle M in the same position, angle K and N in the same position, and angle J and P in the same position. So this statement would be correct also. What would not be a correct statement would be, for example, if I were to write angle J, K, or triangle J, K, L congruent to triangle M, M, N, P. This would not be correct because angle J and angle M are not congruent, although I have them in the same position here. So this would be an incorrect way to write these two triangles, to write the congruent statement for these two triangles. All right, so example number four is kind of similar to uh, this example. I'm going to let you do example number four on your own if you want to pause the video right now and try that. And I'm going to go on to example number five, which uh, has uh, a little bit extra twist on it. Okay, so here we have example number five. Now I have two triangles, except these two triangles are kind of connected up into one figure. I'm still going to go ahead and label them. I'm going to label this triangle number one and triangle number two, just so I can keep them straight. And now if I just look at the picture here, then it looks like I don't have enough information to say that these two triangles are congruent. Remember, in order for two triangles to be congruent, all three of the angles of one triangle have to be congruent to all three angles of the second triangle, and all three of the sides of the first triangle have to be congruent to all three sides of the second triangle. Well, clearly I don't have that. I've only got one side on triangle number one congruent to one side on triangle number two, and I only have these two angles on triangle number one congruent to these two angles on triangle number two. So if all I go by is what's in the picture, then I don't have enough information to say these two triangles are congruent. However, for this problem, I also have this given, these two given statements. This one says C is the midpoint of segment AE. Well, let me take these given statements and label my triangle with them. If C is the midpoint of segment AE, so here's segment AE, and if C is the midpoint of segment AE, then I know that means that segment AC must be congruent to segment CE. That's the definition of a midpoint. So I can mark these segments AC and CE as being congruent. I'll just mark those using my double hash marks, because my single hash marks are already being used for segments A, B, and D, E. My second given statement says C is also the midpoint of segment B, D. Well, here's segment B, D in my figure. And if C is the midpoint of segment B, D, well, that means that segment B, C and segment C, D must also be congruent, again, by the definition of a midpoint. So if B, C and C, D are congruent, let me go ahead and mark those two segments congruent using my triple hash marks. So now I have all three sides of triangle number one congruent to all three sides of triangle number two. I still only have, however, two angles on triangle number one congruent to two angles on triangle number two. But I've got one more thing that I know, which is that 
this pair of angles right here, the third angle on triangle number one, the third angle on triangle number two, they form a particular type of, a particular pair of angles that I recognize as being vertical angles. And one of the things I know about vertical angles is that vertical angles are always congruent. Therefore, this angle is congruent to this angle. Now I have all three angles of triangle number one congruent to all three angles of triangle number two, all three sides of triangle number one congruent to all three sides of triangle number two. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent, and I can begin to write down my different congruence statements here. So my congruent angles, let's see. Let's start with my single curve mark here. Angle B in triangle number one is congruent to angle D in triangle number two. Angle A in triangle number one is congruent to angle E in triangle number two. And angle C, actually instead of calling this angle C because I've actually got two different angles here and if I just say angle C, I'm not sure which one I'm talking about. So let me call this on triangle number one angle ACB. So triangle, so angle ACB is congruent to this angle. Let me call this angle ECD. Angle ECD. So I've got these two angles congruent. So I have all three angles, all three of my angles on triangle number one congruent to all three angles on triangle number two. My congruent sides, let's see, AB. Segment AB is congruent to segment, I'm going to call this segment DE because I want to go in the right, oops, no, I don't want to do that. Angle A to angle B, I want to say segment ED. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to have my congruent angles in the same relative position in my congruence statement. So angle A and angle E are congruent. I want those to be the first. Angle B and D, they're congruent. I'll have those be the second. So let's see. There's my single hash mark sides. Double hash mark sides. AC, segment AC is congruent to segment EC. And let's see, my triple hash marks, segment BC, congruent to segment DC. All right, now I've got all three angles of one triangle congruent to all three angles of another triangle. All three sides of one triangle congruent to all three sides of the second triangle. Now I can write my triangle congruence statement. And I want to make sure I get my angles matched up correctly. So let me just call, I'm going to start with triangle ABC. How about that? Triangle ABC is congruent to which triangle? Let's see. Well, triangle A has double hash marks, so I want E to be my first angle here. Angle B on the first triangle, that's a single curve mark, so I want D to be next. And finally, C and C match up here. So I have triangle ABC congruent to triangle EDC, and there's my congruent statement for that triangle. Now you have some more examples. I believe you have example number six and number seven, where again, you're given not just a drawing with some congruence markings on it, but also a given statement or more than one given statement. You've got to take what's in the given statement and use that to mark your triangle and to make the correct congruence marks on your triangle then identify the congruent angles, the congruent sides, and finally come up with the correct congruence statement for those two triangles. And we'll take a look at those two examples along with example number four in class tomorrow.